everybody. Let's give this problem a try. So it looks a little bit complicated, but let's just go through the steps to solve these types of problems with frames or machines. So this is a machine. So this thing, um, it's called something walking beam is kind of driving this horse head up and down like this to pump oil. And there's a motor right here applying a couple um, to this thing. And there's a counterweight here. There's this rod over here called a pitman. It's connected by pins at A and B. And let's give it a try. So what do we do when you have a machine? You just break it apart and then you draw the free body diagram of each component of the machine. Okay, so there's this part over here. So I'll draw that. And then that kind of horse head thing. All right, so that's, um, let's see, there's a pin at B. So if I pick coordinates and I will decompose the reaction at B at the pin. I'll just decompose it into X and Y components. Okay, and then what else? There's a pin right here at A, for here. All right, so that's A. And then what else we got? Um, oh, so there's this 250 pound load over here. All right, and then this horse head itself has weight, right? It's somewhere, uh, oh here, 60 pounds. So right here, 60 pounds. Okay, and then what about this? Um, here, 130 pounds. This beam itself is 130 pounds right here. Okay, uh, let's see, do we get everything? Yeah, I think so. And then we know this angle right here, that's 70 degrees. Okay, and then this thing, I kind of maybe jumped ahead. You see this pitman is this beam. There's a reaction here at A and then here at D. If you decompose it like this and like this, for sure, this is a two force member, right? These forces on A and D, they have to be equal and opposite. It's either like this or like this. There's no other option, right? It can't be misaligned like this. Otherwise, it would rotate. Or there would be a net torque and angular acceleration. So this is a two-force member. So it's either in tension or compression. So I drew it like this already, right? And then that beam is like this. Pitman. And then there's this beam over here. So I'm going to draw it. Let me make a little bit of space. Let's see, can I still see it in the there? Okay. So it's kind of at this 20 degree angle. And then there's a pin at E. So I'll just decompose that. Okay, and then uh, there's this pin at D. But then you see this is A and this is D. These are equal and opposite. So why don't I just call them the same letter, right? This is the same magnitude as this. So I'll just call it the same letter. There you go. And then what else we have? Um, oh, right here. This counterweight, where is the counterweight? Right here, 200 pounds. Okay, so there's a counterweight of 200 pounds. Okay, let's see. Oh, I, I missed the, the couple. There's a couple right here. Right here like this. All right, so there we go. 
let me move it so it kind of looks like the picture, right? And then there's the that rod over here connecting them. Okay, so right, what looks complicated, this machine, just do that first step, which is break it apart and then draw the free body diagram of each member of the machine. So here we go. Now just for each free body diagram, you could write as many as three equations, right? Some forces in X, some forces in Y, some torque about, somewhere clever for this one, some forces in X, some forces in Y, some torque about, somewhere clever. Clever meaning sum the torque about a point that gives you the fewest number of unknowns. Okay, so for example, let's start right here. In the in the x direction, what do we got? A cosine 70, and then right here, bx, and what else? Oh, that's it. Okay, so that's it. Y direction, right here, negative A sine 70, this minus 130, by, and these two, minus 60, minus 250, all right, and then now let's sum torque about where. So where would be a clever choice? If I sum torque about point A, then I would have, there would be no torque due to this force, but then there would be torque from BY. If I sum the torque about here, I think that's already a pretty clever choice. Then there wouldn't be torque due to this force, this force, or this force. There would only be torque from these three. So let me do that. So I'm gonna sum the torque about point B. Okay, so then, okay, how far is this? Let me look at the picture, five feet. Five feet times just the perpendicular component of this, right? So this is five feet and this would be A sine 70. And that would cause a torque going counterclockwise, which in my coordinate system that I chose would be out of the page, which is the positive Z direction. So this would be positive. Okay, so that's the torque from A about over here. And then the torque by that 60 pound horse head is six feet. And that would go clockwise. So negative six feet and 60 pounds. And then negative for this load right here, this one. So that's seven feet, seven feet, 250 pounds equals zero. Okay, let's pause for a minute. What are the unknowns? Okay, so there's A, um, BX, BY, and over here, A. Okay, so we could solve this equation immediately for A. That's good news and then substitute it here, solve for bx, substitute that here, solve for by. So we know all three, a, bx, by. Okay, now let's go to the next member of the machine right here. Okay, so, oops. all right, um, let some forces in x, okay, what angle is this? Okay, it, it's it. It's at 20 degrees. So this entire thing is tilted 20 degrees, which means, oh, and then, sorry, let me look at the picture. Okay, so this is 70 and this is 20, which means this is perpendicular. Okay, so that means right here, that's 20 degrees, right? Because right here is 20 degrees. And then already it said, 
here to here was 70. So here to here got to, has got to be 20. Okay, so let's sum forces in x. So we got ax um, and then minus a sine 20. And that's it. Okay, y direction, ey plus a cosine 20 and this uh, counterweight. All right, now let's sum torque about somewhere clever. So if I sum torque about over here, then there will be torque from A, EX, EY, and then the couple. So I, I don't think that's too clever a choice. If I sum torque about right here, then there would be torque from this, 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 and the couple, but not A, so that's better. But if I sum torque about point E, then there's only torque from A, 200 pounds, and the couple. There wouldn't be any torque from EX or EY about over here. So I think that's clever. I'll sum the torque about point E. Okay, so, oh, actually this is perpendicular, right? So it's here to here, which, let me look at the picture. That is um, three feet. Okay, so three feet three feet times a and that would be going this way right which is in the positive z direction so that's positive and then there's torque from this so how far is here to here the lever arm um five point right here five point five feet right so so that's minus 5.5 cosine 20 times 200 pounds. Okay. And then uh, don't forget the couple. So let's, let me double check the picture. The couple is drawn going um, clockwise, which is actually in the negative Z direction. So that should be negative couple M. Okay, and then now let's take a look at what is known and what is unknown. EX, A, EY, A, A, M. Okay, but we already know A from right here. So that means we know this value, which means we can solve for EX. We know this value, we can solve for EY. We know this value, we can solve for M. So we've already, so we can solve for everything, A, EX, EY, M, BX, and BY. So we, we solve for everything. This particular question was just asking for this, right? But I'm just demonstrating that with the method, you can solve for everything. Okay, so I hope that was helpful. Keep on practicing. I'll see you on the next video.